It is the raw dog himself, Brandon Royval. And Brandon, man, you, you knew the title shot was coming, but we also know in the UFC, like nothing's official until it's official official. So I guess how exciting is it for you to see it? It's fully announced. It's UFC 296. It's December 16th. It's Pantoja. I mean, how, how great is that that it's a reality? Uh, I feel like I still haven't really accepted it. I, I'm like doing the work necessary, but it's like the the fact of the matter is it's still like surreal to me. It's pretty awesome, man. Obviously the biggest uh, biggest moment of your career thus far. How did the process go, right? You were there as a backup fighter this summer. We talked afterwards, you know, kind of knew that it was there. But as I said, things change sometimes, right? So, I mean, was there any concern along the way or were like, was the UFC in constant communication with you? How did that How did that play out? Uh, not constant communication because I would have been like reassuring for sure. But uh, I feel like um, I was just worried about Brandon Moreno getting it and just getting a rematch after that because uh, I know he brings in a lot of money and he has a lot of fans and uh, it was a really good fight. So uh, I guess that was where the concern lied more than anything. A real fear of yours. I mean, had that happened, I mean, had you did you have a backup plan in place? Like, are we going scorched earth if they try to switch things out or you just deal with it? Like, what was your thought? I guess the only thing was to deal with it is just try to make my next shot, which would be probably calling out all Bozzy or um, someone of that sort. So I, I thought in my head it was just like, all right, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to fight al a card before that or like uh, as soon as possible, you know? Because it's like I, <clears throat> I've only had one fight this year, so it was like if the title fight didn't come, it's like, you know, I want to make money. I'm trying to make a bunch of money this year. I'm trying to, you know, buy houses and, you know, at least you only got a short, a short amount of time in the in the UFC. And it's like as many fights as I could pop off is really what I want to do. But I would be dumb to not wait for a title fight no matter what. So in my head, it was just like, it, if I'm not getting it, I need to do something that's going to make me financially stable in the future and uh, give me a career later on, you know. So uh, I guess that's what was kind of going through my head is just like, I want to know if, if it's me and if it's not me, I need to make something happen within the next few months. Well, luckily, you didn't have to instill the backup plan. You got the and, title. And then re re in as the backup to the backup again. Now, that's like really, that's what was in my mind, too, is just, you know, go out there and fight and then re in as a backup uh, once I win that fight. Hey, you know what? That'd be a pretty gangster plan, though, I'm being honest with you. Like, how could anybody deny that? Like, this dude is doing everything that he can to get this yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that, that's the only thing I want to do in this is just be undeniable, you know? And uh, I felt like I did enough to be undeniable, but I wasn't 100% positive, and it's like, I could go out there and take another fight, but at the same time, if, if I'm next to a title fight, I would be dumb to do that, you know? For that, sure, no doubt about it. So when did you find out for sure? Was it the, the Dana White video? Is that when you knew for sure, or did they tell you beforehand? It, it was two hours or three hours beforehand when I figured out, or I found out, like, it was it was for sure. I knew I was next. I knew that uh, I was pretty much next to a title shot, but I didn't have anyone tell me the date or, or whatever it was until that day. So, um Dana beat me to the punch on a lot of things because I mainly just sat back and was like just kind of playing in my head of like, dang, is this really happening, you know, and then told like the few important people that I feel like needed to know. And then he announced it and I was like, oh, shit, I was like, all right, I got to get on this. Like, like <laughs> people are going to be pissed if I didn't say it and they found out through the Internet, you know. That's funny. All right. So talk to me about this because it's about 10 weeks out right now, I guess, at this point. Right. I, like has training camp started yet? Or I just wondered if like maybe because I know how ready you were for this, that maybe like your team had to tell you like, bro, calm down a little bit. We got we got a long time to go. So has, has training camp started yet or have you been forced to kind of slow down a little bit and realize there's a lot of time left? Yeah, yeah I've already gotten that conversation and uh, I, I've already had like, you know, like natural things happen where it was like, all right, I need to slow it down. Uh, Cause I, like I said, I knew I was next up for the title fight. Um, maybe like a, like a, a month before that, that I was I was gonna be the one in mind. It was just the date that I wasn't sure about. So once the date got announced, I was already like already oh uh, girl like was it uh, redlining it or whatever it was. I was already redlining it every day and uh, yeah. So a couple weeks before that, I got a bunch of weird injuries. I got burned on a motorcycle. I, I had a bunch of things where I couldn't completely train, and I was like, this is actually probably a good thing because. Like the moment I found out I was probably next for it and like nothing reassured completely, I was doing the most. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. Now, now I can get back on my schedule of doing a lot of things. I'm, I'm, I've had a long time to prepare for Pantosia, I would say, including during the uh, during me being the backup, I was preparing a lot for Pantosia too. It's like I, I feel like my game plan is pretty dialed in as it is. So it's just brushing up on things, staying smart, staying healthy, and uh, peaking at the right time. That's awesome, man. I know you're, you're calling it Operation Get My Lick Back, of course, referring to the uh, the original meeting with Pantoja in 2021. Um, listen, for the, every time you've talked about this fight, it just seemed like more important to you than most. Like, is, 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 it, is there something about this one? I mean, obviously, now that there's a title on the line, of course it means everything. But it felt like you needed some revenge on that one anyway. Like, what is it about that fight that you're like, I got to get this one back? 
I mean, for multiple reasons, but uh, I feel like the main reason I I, I take jujitsu super seriously, and uh, getting subbed is something that I've never like. I could go weeks without getting subbed. You know, sometimes I train with really good jujitsu people at uh, Logos uh, with Michael Lear, who's like a world champion. So I, I've been getting got a lot more. But uh, that being said, is you know, jujitsu is something I take a lot of pride in, and uh, I want to be better than anybody on the ground. Anytime I hit the ground, I want to be the threat of all that. So uh, I feel like anybody can land a punch um, and shit not go right. But jujitsu is like pretty methodical, and to get tapped out, it was uh, was not only embarrassing but heartbreaking and just eye opening more than anything. So I, I feel like this fight, where against someone I lose, is my first rematch ever. Um, against someone I lose, lost to uh, and fighting for a belt is almost just like so fitting to everything I've ever done in my life is just mess up everything the first time around and then you know uh, uh, reinvent myself learn new things and then get better and become better as a man along the way and then you know grow from it and this is just almost poetic to my life you know and it's like if you look at my career some of these guys have like I mean, maybe not Pantoja but like some of these guys have some clean records and they're like pretty records and stuff and it's just like that's never been me as a person. I always think that's like, I've never, I've never been the one to just shoot my shot the first time and get it or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've never been that guy. I've always been cut from the teams and fucking, and, and you know, gotten better through summer practices or, or what, whatever it was on, on the off season and just training and just out working and just, you know, out maneuvering and becoming smarter because of it. And I feel like the fact that I get a fight for a belt off a rematch is so poetic and just fitting. And, you know, I feel like this is actually my destiny. That's awesome. I mean, nobody would choose to take the long road, right? Like, it'd be easier for it to just be easy and you win every fight and you take the title. But maybe, I think maybe it makes it a little sweeter, right? When you feel like you really have to work and it didn't just, it's like it didn't just fall in your lap. Like, you knew you had to grind to get there and accomplish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like character has been built along the way. And um, yeah, exactly. The long road is, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like just more suiting towards my life as much as I don't want it to be, you know? And I feel like I've always been the long road kind of person, make mistakes kind of person, and just not give up has always been my uh, my my strong qualities in life. That's awesome, man. Well, since that meeting, neither one of you guys have lost since then. You both look phenomenal. Um, I guess, what do you feel? I mean, have you seen an evolution in him? I mean, you're, you're pointing out where you think you've evolved and mentally where you've you know gotten better. Do you think you've seen him improve or do you think you're going to be seeing kind of that same guy that you were in there with the first time around? Um, I've seen some improvements for sure. And it's like, I, I think the strongest improvement was I didn't think his cardio would hold up during the five rounds in an intense fight like that. And he was able to just grit through and grind through. And I, I see Pantoja and I've always seen him even when the first time I met is just, he's a real fighter, man. And, and Brandon Moreno is a real fighter. And there's a few dudes in this division where I'm like, that guy's a, like a G, you know, like he, he has that, that dog in him, that fight in him and all that. And it's like, Pantosha has that. And uh, I, I just felt like he had a little bit of a cardio issue and he pushed through that whole entire time in that fight and uh, won the bout. And I thought that was pretty amazing. But as far as like technique and um, skill level wise, I don't think so. I, I don't think that, or at least I don't think he's making quicker improvements than I am in this camp, you know, and smarter improvements and he's adjusted. And I honestly think that's also coming from, He's, he's won a lot of his fights, you know, he, he's had a longer winning record than me. And, uh, you know, and um, even before that was on a winning record. And it's just like, uh, I, I've lost some big fights or lost some big moments in fights that I even won. And it's just like, I, I have a, I have a really good cornerman. I have a, a really good couple cornermen and people around me where I'm like, I'm making these adjustments constantly. They're assessing what I'm doing wrong constantly. And, uh, and I've made huge improvements. And, and honestly, I can, a hundred percent credit that to Alexandre Pantoja is just how I box differently, how I move differently. And, uh, um, even the, now I train with the, the actual real life jujitsu team where they have speed, like, like world champions and, and the owner is Michael Lier is a world champion. And it's like, I made big improvements and I made adjustments in my career because Alexandre Pantoja and, uh, he's going to be the reason why I beat him that day. That's awesome, man. That's cool of you to offer that, but uh, I, I can't wait to see this fight. Um, I did see something I thought was pretty cool. You know, knowing all this that you have going on, knowing that you got this title fight coming, you still took some time away recently to give back to the community, right? I mean, school supplies and fresh haircuts for some underprivileged kids, and I don't know, it seemed like a cool thing. And it feels like maybe this could have been a time in your career that you're selfish and you're like, I'm blocking everything out, but it, but no, you're like, I'm still giving back to the community. Why was that so important to you? Um, it was really cool. I feel like it turned into like a family thing. And uh, like my auntie and I kind of organized a lot of it. And uh, then everybody who came and helped was like almost family members or something really close to me. So 
um, it, it was actually really cool. And it turned out way better than I could have ever expected. Uh, we were expecting maybe like 200 backpacks and like, you know, I was in charge of the word to mouth thing. I was like in charge of like getting people there, like are not getting like the, the kids there. So I was just, I was curious how it was going to work out. And it was all word to mouth and like, you know, Instagram posts, Facebook posts and like, but, but we ended up giving over 350 backpacks away, which was, uh, it, it was, it was such a good problem to have. Um, I remember right when, right when I got there, like or right when uh, it was about to start, the line was like wrapped around the corner and I was like, damn, we got like four more hours of this. And I was like, you know, like we'll, we'll see how this goes. And, uh, Somewhere in between, it was just like, all right, we need to go run to the store, get more backpacks. We need more school supplies. We need more this, that. And uh, it was such a little cool problem to have. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it went that well. Next year, it would be even better, you know? And uh, I, I feel like <clears throat> doing, like, human service type work has always been, like, my actual calling in life and, like, stuff like that. Like, I love MMA, and that's my passion and my dreams and all that. But it's like, I feel like when this is all said and done, I, I always want to do community work and kind of get get in there and do, like, things of that sort. So uh, it's awesome that I have a name now and I can kind of work out, work in with a lot of this stuff. So uh, I've been very fortunate this year and that we're going to continue doing stuff like that. Like this uh, October 15th, uh, we have like these little Denver, the Denver boxing communities and, and the, the boxing communities, they, they pretty much don't like, they're not asking for money. Like they're not, MMA is like a hundred, two hundred dollars to go train at an MMA gym. It's ridiculous, you know? And uh, boxing gyms are like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, you know, and they're, they're doing more for the community than not. So, uh, a lot of these dudes are kind of struggling and not only they're struggling, but their kids are struggling. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's not that much supplies going around and, uh, you know, the kids need to do tournaments and the tournaments around the state's going to cost money. So, uh, October 15th, we're, we're raising money and, uh, trying to just get back to the boxing community and the, a couple of the boxing communities in the, in Southwest Denver. And, uh, like I said, that, that's something I've always been kind of passionate about is just, you know, helping the area and just, it, it's cool. Cause I think all I know is like the Denver and like Colorado Metro area. So, uh, it gives me more opportunity to kind of get back to already what I know, you know, and the people that I know around there. And it's been really cool. And then having a name on top of that has been a blessing in that sense too. That's awesome, man. I love to see that. Like I said, I know right now it would be easy to kind of focus away from that, but to continue to get back to the community, I think, you know, shows a lot about your character. So uh, listen, title fight, biggest one of your career, man. It's going to be the big pay. I'm curious what you're thinking about this fight week. I'm sure you've looked at the rest of the lineup around you. Uh, the press conference might get a little bit wild. Uh, you're going to be up there with some characters. I mean, the main event, you know, is going to be nuts. You got Tony Ferguson and Patty Pimble. Like, Ian Gary's been talking a little trash lately. I don't think, I don't think Wonder Boy is going to get too crazy or anything. But uh, what, what are you thinking about that? I think it's going to be a pretty wild scene. Are you looking forward to that? Or are you kind of shying away from the madness that that might be? I, I feel like I'm kind of shying away from the madness. I feel like I'm just going to go kick it with Stephen Wonder Boy and just ask him questions about his training. <laughs> like said, I, I feel like, uh, I don't know. That, that, I was thinking that too. Is just the press conference is, is something else. And it's like, I didn't even really think about that. And then you see all these big names announced. And I'm getting tagged at like, what's going to happen in this press conference. And I'm like, Oh shit. Like I, I never even gave that any thought, you know? And uh, now I'm like, damn, do I have to get ready to be roasted by somebody or something like this. Like I didn't think about that. I'm gonna have to write some bits down or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I'm looking forward. Now the big question, have you gotten to sign the new contract yet? And you know, you know, trying to put some zeros in the bank. Did you get a chance to see the, the, the championship uh, type contract? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And uh, I feel like, I mean, I guess uh, um, you can't motivate me anymore for this fight, but I'm like, damn, this is finally the money I need to be making and uh, finally just put myself in a way better position. And, uh, you know, I I've already been fortunate enough in the UFC to pretty much bonus every one of my fights. And, like, I got moved up the, the payment ladder quickly because I've been fighting top five. But that being said, is it, I wasn't making this much. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome man what's well, much deserved man like you said you put in the work to get here man so last thing for me i mean i guess just you know as you said this has been the goal this has been we're working for what, what would it mean i know you're still kind of trying to process that the shots official have you processed what would it mean to walk away with the belt that night yeah yeah to me it's just a, a class and i think this with every fight too is just uh a collection of my art my, my life's work you know what i'm saying and it's just uh I feel like when I was younger, I'd operate from like a place of hate where I'm like, I'm going to show everybody wrong. I'm going to, uh, this motherfucker, like uh, I'm going to beat his ass because he's trying to kill me. And like, I had that, like that mind state of just being like, all right, vengeful. And this is like, you know, my mentality going into things. But now it's just like, I, I feel like I understand it a lot more. And it's just, uh, you know, I, I love martial arts and uh, martial arts is my favorite thing to do. Uh, training is my favorite thing to do every day and i'm so fortunate that i get to just do that full time and uh, that was like my that was my original dream is just a train full time it was like 
I, I feel like the UFC bout was so so far beyond that. that I was just like, I hope I could just train full time one day. And uh, now that I'm doing that, it's just th this is my life work. This is everything I've ever worked for, and uh, all into one big test, you know, all into one big performance. And I feel like with Pantoja. I can put on a performance with and uh you know and express myself all that other little cheesy stuff it's just uh, i want you guys anytime i fight is to get a little piece of me and i feel like i've done a good job a good job at delivering that so far but this fight will, will be the the perfect the perfect performance and i have the perfect canvas to go paint on i feel like pantos is gonna gonna allow me to do some sweet stuff in the cage and show off my true skill set I love it, man. You can't say any better than that. Well, man, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. On paper, this is a phenomenal fight. You two guys are both incredible martial artists, incredible athletes. So uh, best of luck in training. Uh, enjoy the process, and we'll see you here in Las Vegas in December. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you, bro. Good seeing you.